We got good news and bad news. I would like the bad news first, I think. It's day off, so I'm not on my uh, ADD medicine. And the good news? Not on my ADD medicine. Okay. Roll the intro, please. Okay. We love no Adderall pods. We love Adder no Adderall pods. Yeah. The problem is, is that I am not typically great at staying on track. And so I feel like you give us some structure. No, this ad this podcast is brought to you by not Big Pharma. By Sober Jeremy. S Sober Jeremy. Sober Jeremy. With nothing. Usually people get me after I've been used and abused for 12 hours on a Monday. Uh -huh. Today, I've done nothing. That's you know what I have so to do nice. today? Nothing. If we go late, all good. No, no, nope. no, 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 no. I have no today, literally ah, not, a, not a big deal. Like I forgot that it was a holiday. Cause like, obviously like I don't work like a regular nine to five. Welcome to labor day, everybody. And so it's labor day, except for I have a literal back to back day. It is, it's, it's ridiculous. So everyone's looking at Lauren when she is usually in my schedule. Yeah. And I'm on your schedule on Monday evenings. Yeah. This is great. This is great. I'd love to go over what Labor Day means to each other. We could go around the room, <laughs> compare and what contrast. What is Labor Day about? Working. We're, yeah, but we're not working. Right. We're not working today. We're not working today. No, it's working no. today. Well, Labor I'm Day not. is in Canada as well too. I didn't realize. Canadian Labor Day? Canadian Labor Day. Day. Also also Labor Day today. I feel like that rarely happens with kind of like the random, not to offend any of like the laborers, but flavor I, talk. I feel like is going I know, to be I know, I know. I'm furious. nervous. We don't really know what we're celebrating today, but I feel like a lot of like these kind of like more random holidays are not wow. typically the same across like uh, both countries. Well, Blue Cross America, Blue Cross, Blue, Blue Collar America, <laughs> Blue Cross Blue Shield America. Yeah, what? Fuck! I can't believe it's September. Oh my god, that is so. Literally, just seeing that today is September fifth is so wild. Stop, drop, roll, rate the pot at your leisure. We're not in a rush today. No, no, we are. We can take our time. I got, I got some place to be. I hate to tell you, I couldn't have less to do. Sit oh my back. God. This is going to be a Joe Rogan five hour podcast. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I have exactly, you know, it could be a 90 minute podcast though. I just have to be done by um by two. So Jeremy, that's no after all, Jeremy. That's good for the first half. Go for it. Okay, great. Pop off, queen. Listen, <laughs> we got to talk about corn today. <laughs> we got to talk about Do you know about orgies. the corn? It's bam, bam, bam. The, the song. That was good. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like the Grinch version. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I don't. Bang, I don't know. Bang, bang, bang. It sounds like the Donald like. Duck. Bang, yeah, bang, bang. yeah. Um, I know that I've seen a lot of. Um, Remixes? So I saw this thing on TikTok. <laughs> wow. Bing. Anyway, I literally oh. just fixed that frame. No, you fixed that frame. I literally just fixed the other frame. <laughs> Sir, I swear. <gasps> <laughs> Motherfucker, I swear to God. This is like, like this is like, oh, this is, oh, the Silver Hyoden from Ikea. Silver Hyoden. Really from Ikea? Silver, made in Poland. I've been to Ikea in a lot. Shout out Poland, minute. Polish tillers. Do you know, wait, Ikea is oh. doing um, a collaboration with a DJ. I forget who it is. Who's the Swedish DJ? Mafia. Is it Swedish House Mafia? <gasps> yeah. It, yeah, it might be. I saw that and I was like, this is, I need you to fix that. Fix what? I know that your brain today is sideways, but I need you to fix that. This looks great to me. I feel comfortable. For the with sake this. of everyone, all of our viewers today. This looks great. Is oh. it Swedish House Mafia and IKEA? What are yeah. they doing? What's the collab? Uh, introducing it, oh, a, a collection of homeware interior solutions wow. and accessories such as the iconic Fracta bag. Wow. Pop off Fracta. Fracta bag. Oh, I guess it's a music producers, DJs, creators. Cute. Well, that's actually a great idea. How trendy of IKEA. Yeah, right. Oh my God, Jeremy, Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. Oh, please. I'm way, there's, I'm oh, much more good. apt. That looks good. Is it good? Is it straight? Okay, yeah. great. Great, don't touch it. Okay. Good? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. <sighs> Painting <sighs> hanger. Breaking our set. Fixing our set. Anyway, um, welcome back to Wild Sun Dying. We got to talk about corn, we got to talk about Burning Man, we got to talk about Lauren's birthday extravaganza. Birthday month. We're gonna talk about things that aren't gonna get edited out of this podcast like last week. We're not gonna talk about that this week either because in case we need to edit it out again, that's it. <laughs> ooh. 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 Um, the tea. Ooh. I also would like to talk about uh, Monty Lopez updates. Monty because Lopez. The Monty Lopez tea is it's just, it stays hot. Okay. It stays hot. Boiling really hot. I know. I know. Great. Um. So I didn't, so this, this fucking corn thing. And I don't know. I feel like random trends like this start on one corner of the internet. And like, I'm always shocked when people's for you page don't suggest 
Like when I think something is viral, it's like shocking when someone's never heard of it. So like, I'm a little concerned. Do we have the original I'm glad you talked corn? about this because I like to talk about picking lock talk. I just ordered two entry level, learn how to pick a lock talk accessory packs this yeah. morning. Something that it's never been on my for you page. So it, it, it gives you the lock to mm, practice. Yeah. And you can just start working and, and, and just for, think about if we were to come on the scene as emergency first responders and not want to make a mess. Right. I'll, I'll now have the skills to do that. We started this really great show called The Patient and he was trying to pick a lock with a plastic fork and it did not work. But you know what I was thinking the other day is that if he knew how to pick a lock, if he broke the arm off of his glasses, he probably would have something small enough to pick the lock with. I was thinking the same thing. Really? No, but I wanted to corroborate just to case, in case you wanted to like keep going on that point. Yeah. So you want to try it again? Um, I was thinking the same thing. The Patient, great show, could have picked a lock. Jeremy's on lock. Oh, you know what talk I'm on is penguin talk right now. So if we ever come across a rogue penguin, you'll know how to handle it. Well, this penguin was really, is like his thing is that he loves to cuddle with his, cause okay, I had this with conversation his with, with his with his zoo handler person, his mm. biologist lady person. And is she alive? Yeah. But if she wasn't? No, I don't think penguins are into necrophilia with human bodies. I think it's just a penguin to penguin necrophilia. Also, if you have not watched the animal facts episode, then this might come as Necky a shock wacky. to you, but penguins are into the that necrophilia neck -neck. and it's a little bit, we're not gonna, we're not gonna kink shame. The penguins. <laughs> well, <laughs> but um, children, children and dead bodies. We had this That's conversation with Remy and Cal saying how both Remy and I like, it's it's crazy that teachers in America make literally less than something as fun as like a, a penguin keeper. And so Cal was actually arguing in like favor of, no, like, like being a teacher for kids would be so much better. And Remy and I both were on the side of like, like penguins aren't gonna like, okay, yeah, they might poo sometimes on you. And like, they probably smell kind of fishy. I wanna point out that I didn't take my ADD medicine today. Lauren always doesn't. And this is where her brain's going. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> One of us needs structure and normally no, it's you. this is you. great. Keep so going. Remy and I were on the side of penguins are gonna be a lot nicer to you. I have so many thoughts. Unconditionally your friends. Yeah. And I feel like, like I also am on the talk right now where it's teachers just being like, here are six savage things that my preschooler said to me. And it's like, you have dusty ankles. No. Stuff like that. No, no, and so no, no. I just think that penguins- Middle schoolers. Yeah, middle schoolers are fucking mean. Preschool High school is also, like no. children are just mean Preschool little creatures. Preschool's nice. You think? I guarantee it. I don't think so. As a I, former education major, I will tell you. I was fine with teaching kids. I was fine with teaching high schoolers. I was not fine with teaching middle school. Middle schoolers. Middle school is the worst. From the age of sixth grade to uh -huh. eighth grade or grade six to grade eight, as you say in Canada, uh -huh. those aren't humans anymore. That's a, a period in which you turn into just Satan's asshole of a person. Yeah. You just spew mean things because you're so wildly insecure about your own life. You just uh -huh. have to constantly redirect. Uh -huh. Preschoolers would not say you have dusty ankles. Yeah, but a preschooler would call you fat and not realize that like you shouldn't do that. No, they wouldn't call you fat. They'd be like, yeah, but you're too big to fit into this. And you're like, <sighs> That's almost even, no, no, they just have it's no different. filter. They, right. Like they're giving you the most authentic opinion. They're observing. And some, right, exactly. They're observing. Exactly. But they just have no filter yet. Right. But a seventh grader- So they're unintentionally mean. Seventh graders or grade seveners are, are just like exactly. actually mean. You can't be that- you, uh, High school kids are mean too. See, and that's what I'm saying. I just think that penguins over children. Yeah. Is where I stand. I know that I can't be the only one out here dropping my phone at just at all times, twice a day, three times a day, four times a day. And that's why you get a case, right? Finding a case that's actually protective while still looking slim and cute can be hard. And that's why I love Casetify. Casetify's goal is about creating a case that's not only sleek and stylish, but also protective. Engineered with EcoShock, Case Device latest production tech, their newest iPhone 14 Impact Series is 20% more protective and just as slim. Their cases are optimized for protection up to 11 and a half feet. 11 and a half feet? That's four. At a 5X the military standard. What What are you doing with your phones, folks? That's like two Jeremy's. No, nothing you can't do with Case Device. Withstanding drops up to 130 times. Pretty amazing if you ask me. That's like two weeks for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so and thank God for Case Device. Lauren needs to change these things out every two weeks or so. But yeah, for everybody else, yeah. <laughs> Case Device has the cutest designs on their phone cases. I love browsing the site whenever I get bored of my current case, which is every other day. 
And so I just, I just go through a rotation. They've got tons of prints and designs to choose from. And if you still can't find the one, you can always design your own customized case. The options are truly endless. Plus, case device cases are super eco-friendly. They're made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials. Some are even made from old case device cases through their Recastify program. Get one of the most protective, cool looking and environmentally friendly phone cases the internet has to offer. Get 15% off and use our code 15WILD. That's 15% off with the code 15WILD at casetify.com. Join Josie, Alicia, and Yasmin, three fearless young actresses, disruptors, and best friends as they navigate the issues that affect their lives on Crooked's new podcast, Dare We Say. From hookup culture and social media to structural racism and LGBTQ plus rights, the girls are leaving no stone unturned and no DM unread when it comes to discussing what matters. They won't shy away from diving deep into controversial topics that are important to their generation. The girls even turn to their elders, actors, activists, comedians, experts, politicians, and 20 six year olds in an attempt to understand the world their generation was handed and what they can do to improve it. We promise you don't want to miss this show. So grab your kombucha, your iced coffee, and your 17 other beverages and catch a new episode of Dare We Say every Thursday, wherever you get your podcasts. I I know when I've, I've come to the edge of me being able to- Convince me? Stoke reason. Yeah. Nothing's being stoked. No. Penguins over children, and I rest my case. Hey, listen, I think for you, I think I would prefer you teach penguins over children. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't I mind teaching. I was going to ask, what, so a penguin and a baby are drowning, or let's say a middle schooler are drowning in a pool. Which one do you save? Fucking easy. The well, penguin, 100%. The penguin no penguin probably chance. should be able to swim. Oh, yeah, that's probably actually not a good idea. Yeah, penguins can swim. They're actually quite strong Quick swimmers. Sand. Okay. Oh, Penguin, 100%. Well, also, it depends if the middle schooler had said something really mean to me. <laughs> I'd be like, bitch, bye. It, bye. That, that and also, I will say, you know, by seventh grade, they should both be able to swim. So like, yeah, figure it fucking out. Your and loss. Also, by, actually, this sounds like a you problem. Actually, I'd like one more point I'd like to add to that. Looking back to my own childhood, in seventh grade, I uh -huh. was more apt to be able to deal with quicksand at that point in time because I had talked about quicksand much more regularly up until like between the ages of like, grade four and seventh grade, didn't both there for you, than I had you. the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Because I think we can all agree that as children, we were talking about quicksand as if that was a thing we're all gonna have to deal with. Yeah. The moment you lead eighth grade, no, no more quicksand. fantasy stories, No, that's it. No, I saw a tweet the other day that literally said that being like, I feel like we really grew up thinking that we were gonna encounter a lot of quicksand in our lives and knowing how to deal with that when you do approach quicksand. Never. And so I'm glad we brought that up. Uh, transitioning now to what is going to be my favorite segment <gasps> no. of the pod. So, you know, those dog owners that bring their dogs places that they probably shouldn't have. That was Lauren this week. Oh my God. Also, no, no, no. I'd like to state my case because this is, I just feel like you're setting me up for, um. Moose shit in a blanket store. He shit in the blanket store. You know, the, 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 the story you go in to, to touch and feel warmth oh. and, and comfort. Moose took a fat shit in there. Okay, so I was, let's, I, was, let's, I was not there. Let's back up a couple steps. But it never happened to my watch. Let's back up a couple steps. Um, one, we were in Malibu at an outdoor, like little mall parking lot situation. What, what is that? What is it? Malibu Lumberyards, whatever. It's like a very like cute outdoorsy spot. Also, we Barefoot Dreams, which again <laughs> is the blanket store, is right next door to the dog store that we were picking up food from. And also Malibu in general, uh, even just LA is a generally very dog friendly yep. city. Uh -huh. And so Moose is for sure not the first dog to have taken a shot in Barefoot Dreams, but we went from uh, the dog food store because I had to go pick up some extra dog food yes. and then directly to Barefoot Dreams. And Moose is a stubborn walker, okay? And so like, it's not unlike him for me to be kind of pulling and tugging on him. And so normally I just go about my life and sometimes, you know, he fights back a little bit. It's, just, it's a bull terrier thing. And so I'm reaching forward, touching, because I have like this habit where I need to like touch all the fabrics. Lauren goes through the store and touches- Everything. Everything. And she's a parent's nightmare. I just need to feel how soft it is. It I need, is I need to feel, revolting. I need to feel the softness. And so I'm touching the things, touching the things, and Moose is pulling, he's pulling, he's pulling. And I COVID was a nightmare for us, let's be clear. What? The COVID was a nightmare oh, for us. Oh yeah, I had a really hard time not just touching everything. Like I know, I yeah, know, like, it was it's really it's tough. Like put like mittens on her, she I walks know, through. I know, gloves. I know, I just, I have like, I don't know, the urge to just like feel things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I turn around and Moose is like in the squat position. And I wanna be, I could not tell you the last time Moose has like had an accident somewhere in the last 
three years. I could not tell you the last time Moose is like shat somewhere that he's you, not supposed to shit. Telling you now. And it happened. It happened. I turned around and I was like, oh my God. I was like, Moose is about to poop. And then, and then I follow the trail and there's like five different lumps, <gasps> a clumps. Nugglets. Nugglets of poop. And so I had been pulling him. I'd been pulling just him. Just feeling a fabric. Feeling fabric, just living my I, life. I want living so the Malibu bad dream. to call them for and the security say, footage. we need the security footage. I <laughs> actually have a mutual friend with the owner and, and there's a small part of me that wanted to reach out for that favor because I, I was fucking mortified. I immediately hooked his, and like, luckily we weren't at like the back of the store. We were like literally right at the front. And so it, it happened the moment we walked in basically. I had touched one thing and Moose had shat five times. <laughs> Um, and so I hooked his leash onto the door and I was like, I am so sorry. I apologize profusely. I picked it up and luckily, thank God, Moose had like the healthiest, cleanest, like most solid poo in the entire world. I was hoping you get into that. And no, it could have been messy. It could have been really, really bad. I was for nervous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there, there, the way, it, it was best case. It was had best you not case had poo. a bag, would you have used a blanket and just paid for it? No, absolutely not. Well, thank God they didn't have blankets on the floor. Oh my God, imagine. And also it was like linoleum. Thank God it wasn't carpet. And so I literally picked up his little turds and, and I grabbed his leash and I, I apologized again. And I was like, I'm so sorry. And I ran. Can you say aluminum linoleum five times fast? What is the, what, what is Aluminum. It? Aluminum. Aluminum for our UK listeners. Aluminum. Linoleum. Linoleum. Yep. Aluminum, linoleum, aluminum, linoleum, aluminum, but linoleum. Aluminum, aluminum, linoleum. linoleum. I, mm. I think I just nailed that. Aluminum, yeah. linoleum. Aluminum, linoleum. Yeah. <laughs> Crush it. So anyway, so Moose shat in one of the most expensive blanket stores that I uh, personally know of. And I was mortified and Moose looked honestly pleased with himself. I'm just thrilled that we didn't need to get another blanket. That's all. Oh, those blankets are the best. Barefoot Dreams blankets are hands down some of the best blankets in the this entire world. This is not a, a brand. It's the best <sighs> blanket next to the Wild Till Nine blanket. Obviously. Obviously. Obviously we should do a collab. That, yeah, they, I, it's a different texture of blanket than the ones that we already doing. So it wouldn't cannibalize the sales of our own blanket, I think, mm. because it's it's like a, it's like a- You think people are getting our blanket for the feel? Are you kidding me? Okay. If there's one thing that I deliver in a product that people can bet on that is gonna be consistent, soft it is softness. Mm. You are a I soft I spend girl. my entire life touching things. I know what soft you feels like. You do touch like. a lot of things. I touch everything in a store. Yeah. I won't buy it if it's soft. Like the amount of sweaters that are so cute, but have like a rough, weird, like brushed inside is mm -hmm. so offensive. Mm. I just don't understand why someone would make a sweater like that. That's like literally hurts your skin. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if my skin is more sensitive than others. <laughs> you just yesterday <laughs> tried to tell me that your skin is denser than mine. <laughs> yesterday. We're not gonna get into that. <laughs> Yesterday, full on conversation. Denser, denser maybe, but I think that like, look, why is it bothering me so much Yours that- is denser, but more sensitive? Sensitive, yeah. Okay. Like a rough fabric would ruin my day. Mm. Okay. And so like, I'm just wondering where that comes from. Okay. <laughs> What did you want to talk about? We Somehow we got here. You said, I saw this TikTok. Honestly, you took us on a left turn with your lock picking talk. I sure did. I'm gonna keep doing it too. We went from- I have no qualms with that. I have nothing <laughs> no to do qualms. today. I have no <laughs> oh. previously- Corn. Yeah. Corn. Corn. Thank you so I much. Was in, I was gonna let us oh sit into it for a while. Um, you know who actually remixed the Corn song is the Gregory Brothers. And they're the ones who made that ridiculous song with my ex-boyfriend that went wildly viral and that I cannot shake for the life of me. Shout out Gregory Bro <sighs> Brothers. Gregory Brothers. <laughs> Actually, about, I think it was seven years ago or six years ago, I did an episode of, I did an episode, I did a segment, I got to be part of a segment of YouTube Rewind forever ago, where I flew to New York, I still lived in Toronto, so yeah, it would have been like seven years ago, where I flew to New York, they're filming like literally a 10 second segment when, it was the year that the, um, the Ice Bucket Challenge was popular. Okay, ALS. And yeah, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, and it was me, Marquez Brown, Casey Neistat, and the Gregory Brothers. That I, makes sense. It literally was like my snap memory the other day, and I was like, this is so random. And then a few years later, they remixed that video, and I will never escape the song for the rest of my life. And sometimes it still pays out a royalty check. 
I, by the way, they're nice to have even given you a royalty for that. Yeah, they really are. They yeah. really are. So anyways, they remix um, like viral moments from like the news or TikToks or just like general dialogue. And they're able to make these insane melodies and like what feels like an actual song. And it is so impressive. They're they're wildly musically talented. Yeah, that, that's a skill into it, like unto its own. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And they're like a family of a sister and brothers and they all are equally, it's crazy. Like they're just all musically gifted. Can we listen to the corn thing now? Well, are we gonna get are we gonna get flagged for well, the? Yeah, we're not gonna actually show it or listen. I didn't oh wait, oh wait, but this is the this actual is the news clip, yeah, of yeah. the kid. So this is the this is the video, We'd the like interview. We would like to comment on um, current happenings. <clears throat> no, this is corn kid of his real interview. Here we go. For me, I really like corn. <laughs> what do you like about corn? Ever since I was told that corn was real, it tasted good. <laughs> Did you think corn wasn't real? But when I tried it with butter, everything changed. I love corn. Mmm, <laughs> corn. Mmm, corn. You think everyone should be eating corn? <laughs> <laughs> everyone, you can pause it there. It's so funny. Kids are just like, this is like the wholesome kid who would accidentally call you fat unintentionally. You know what I mean? Like not everybody just, yeah. has to like corn. I know, but that is just like the cutest, most wholesome moment ever. Yeah. And I love how he just gonna, doesn't answer the penguins. question. You're not gonna get that from penguins. Yeah, penguins would just be nice to you. They wouldn't insult you. No, they might fart on you. That you think that child wouldn't fart on you? No, it's the seals that you watch farting. Yeah, and sneezing. And sneezing. It's yeah, the seals. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The corn kid is is adorable. I love how kids just ignore questions when he was like, "Do you didn't think corn was real?" And he was like, "And then I found butter. Mmm, corn." Because like they like to get to the end of their point and then they'll think about yours. I mean, yeah, if, then, even if that. With, well, that's the thing. Like, if they want to think about it. Okay, and then he got flown out to somewhere, right? South Dakota. South ah, Dakota. To a corn factory. Mm. A corn With a maize corn land. Corn, yeah. corn land. Oh my God. Wait, is that in South Dakota? Yeah, yeah. corn land. This was from South Have Dakota's- Have you been to corn land? Oh, so I gotta Shut get something up. better than that. You've been to corn land? Not only have I been to corn land. Shut the fuck up There right is now. a contest <gasps> that happens there. Pull it up. Pull up right now. What? Pull up that South Dakota on Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> South Dakota corn uh, contest thing. Corn Images? yield contest? No, no, no. Palace. Palace. Put in palace. Corn palace? Oh, those are all beautiful photos of corn, to be honest. Beautifully shot. Yes. This <gasps> place, the Mitchell Corn Palace. So you see here, they, they have a thing, a contest. They have a contest there that I don't know if it's daily, I don't know if it's weekly, I don't know if it's monthly, but the point is that they have a contest, <gasps> okay? And not only have I been there, I did not witness the contest, but you know who was? Who? Donna. Donna was the Corn Palace princess. Shut the actual fuck on up On a vacation right that they were driving now. in and around <gasps> South Dakota. So you too, if you have been to the Mitchell Corn Palace in the South Dakota. The Mitchell Corn Palace? I wanna hear from you if there are any other princesses <gasps> in the comments. Oh my God, we couldn't have even planned a better segment than this. Donna was the corn princess. There's a picture out there that I don't think I'll be able to get for this pod, but if I can get it, oh I will get it. And it will be God. photocopied <gasps> onto a scanner mm -hmm. and then that scanner will create a PDF and that PDF will be put onto this. But if it's not, it's not. Oh my God, the Corn Palace. And so is the Corn Palace like a museum or do they make actual corn there? I'm honestly offended for Corn Kid that they didn't take him to the Corn Palace and they took him to a corn factory or corn lands. Like there's obviously tears to this in South Dakota. So it's like, why didn't he get to go to the Corn Palace? And Maybe they like did. shunned him off to the corn land. Oh my God, are you calling Donna right now? Yeah. <gasps> A surprise what a guest. treat. Well, hello. Mom. Yeah. I, 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 I can give you context later. I don't have time to give you context now, okay? I have a very, very, very specific, very serious question for you. Okay, I can barely hear you, but go ahead. Tell me about the time you became the Corn Palace Princess. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was eight years old. Go on, Okay, good. Keep going. It was in the summer. Okay. <laughs> what more is it? They just, we were sitting in the audience watching some show mm -hmm. and they just came and what, up to In what state? And, isn't it South Dakota? It's South Dakota. That's correct. South Dakota. Yes. They came up to me and told me and my mom, I don't know if they pulled the rest of us or not. And Okay. And, and, um, and that they became you. And that became me and they took my picture and they sent it to the Quincy Herald wig 
and they put it in the newspaper. And when I showed up for school the first day in August or September when school started, the teacher pulled it out to show the class that we had a Corn Palace princess among us. We had royalty in our classroom. Mm-hmm. And that was that. did that make you feel really cool at the time? Oh, my gosh. I was so humiliated. <laughs> you know, I don't like attention drawn to me. I do know and that. I couldn't even... I didn't even know she, when, she, when she's royalty. I'm looking around. Oh, ooh, and you know, I have an article here, and did you know we have a princess among us? Ooh, 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 you know. And then that was you. <laughs> and it was I. <laughs> well, uh, I can't. It's just it's difficult to describe in, in the amount of time that I have, but I will tell you later just how that somehow the 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 side of the corn palace in South Dakota came up in a picture, and I I needed to tell Lauren this story. So now that I have it straight, thank you. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. The cuddle down people keep wanting me to order, not cuddle down, cuddle clones. And there is even a 20% off sale. But I was thinking maybe that would be a good activity for us when I come to visit you and we could order that together. We could make a moose together. I think we'd, I'd do better that way. I think so we'll I'm just going to hold off for a month because that should still give us plenty of time by Christmas. I think that's a great idea. All right. That's I love you. Bye. Activity. Okay. See you later. Bye. That was incredible. Also, the people wanted Donna on the pod. The people got Donna on the pod. Donna just had her first guest appearance on the pod. She might have just also ruined her Christmas present to you, but that's Well, no, it was going to be a birthday present. And so you said that it was going to be- Well, you're still not supposed to know about that. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. So Donna was the Corn Palace princess. Oh my God, that is hilarious. I think most of that will make the recording. Yeah. There might be a portion in that that we might need to omit just for this audience. But point is- For some um, politically correct clarification. Listen, I just want to point out that that's my Corn Palace princess story. Wow. That, I, come, that, I come from royalty. That was incredible. Yeah. That was incredible. That we could not have planned a segment that perfect. Sir, I, I assure you, had we planned it, it would have gone poorly. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, it, yeah, she would have been really nervous if we had told her, like, we're going to call her to ask she her about her corn. No, there's no, no, yeah, she wouldn't have answered. Well, yeah, Don, yeah. Is, Don and I are actually both great at this and terrible. Are you going to tell her that she that this is going to be on the internet? Of course not. Yeah, yeah. That, no. I think that I think that terrible that, 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 idea. Yeah. Does yeah, she yeah. watch? No. There's a few Love segments it. of like Donna stories that have gone wildly viral on TikTok, and going to be honest, they're not. Donna is the most lovely woman ever, but they're not her brightest shining moments. And I, it is of all the moments that should be in a bright bulb in the sky. Those weren't the brightest, but you know it, what? It, it was the, it was the one where she called me an or an oriental. <laughs> Rug, an oriental rug. <laughs> you know, the apple sometimes falls farther from the tree than other apples. Than other apples. That's okay though. That's okay. What it else was, you want to talk was, about? It was a learning. It was a learning moment. Um. So anyway, these cl- what are they called again? Clone. We can't talk about your birthday present. Cuddle, cuddle, cuddle clones. Cuddle clones. Cuddle clones. Clones of cuddling. Clones of cuddling. I am so clones. interested to see how this goes because I've had a few people who do it, and sometimes it turns out really cute. So basically, you send like a ton of photos of your pet in like different angles and they make you a clone now, plushie. Oddly enough, I must I, just asterisk here. Moose, similar to the song that Nicki Minaj put out earlier this year, only has good angles. Oh yeah. You know, you're a bad bitch when you can take pose, pictures pose from, any angle. from you can pose most, from if any not all angle. angles. Yeah, Moose looks great. He literally has never had a bad angle. Like, never had one. So you send all of the angles to this company and they produce this like, Plushy, I want to say, I want to be very clear. It is not anything like a squishmallow. I think it's like kind of like a dense plushy, but it's supposed yeah. to be a clone of your pet. And I've seen some really fucking terrifying ones, but I've also seen some really good ones. Yeah, see, they're kind of scary a little bit. Like they're supposed to be super color accurate. Some of them actually look really good. So I also am, yeah, it's a little scary, right? Like I, I have mixed feelings on it kind of. Oh, that Aussie is pretty good. Oh, that one is scary. Ah! <laughs> honestly, no, but honestly, which one's the, the I freak? I can, oh God, I, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to experience all of this. This is the most Donna thing ever. Oh, that one's cute. That looks that so real. Yeah, that, one, that one's really cute. I just know. So yesterday, Jeremy thought that he punted moose because there was a bag of, I don't know what it was, like a backpack in the hallway. And he thought that it was moose um, because it was just like a shadow. And so like now I'm thinking about like how scary it's going to be from the corner of the of your eye and your peripherals (laughs) when you see the cuddle clone version of moose because it's going to look so real. Can we get him like a cat where their eyes kind of um, kind of like just 
in the in the dark, you can just see that the, like the glowing. Yeah, yeah. I don't hey, know. You keep commenting on these. I'm gonna grab a um, a, a beverage, um, but you keep commenting on Cuddle Clones. We'll be right back. You want anything? In an hour, you're fine. I'm gonna murder you. No. <laughs> Will you bring me a surprise snack? A surprise snack? Yeah. You actually have lost your snack privileges on this podcast because what? You're a chomper. You're I, a. I promise I'll chomp far away from the microphone. You're gonna get. I eat my throat. Gobble ball. That, that, happened, that happened one time. It's happened 100 no, percent of the time. Those are fries. Those are fries. Those are notorious for getting stuck in your throat as a gobble ball. I'm telling you. Surprise no, snack, please. You had, you had milkshake snack. throat. Surprise snack. Thank you. <laughs> surprise snack. When Jeremy leaves the room, I'm gonna make a decision on what I think he's gonna bring me. So I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I'm trying to think. We have a ton of snacks right now, so I'm not entirely sure. We Wait, fruity. No, no, no. It'll be, from the, it'll be from the pantry. Yeah, I'm okay. just trying to think. We have a ton of like sour candy right now. I got a PR package from Sour Strips, which is wildly random. Oh, okay. Um, so we've got some sour strips. I'm also trying to think of like placement, like what's near the front, because I don't think he's gonna have like the effort involved in this to like whatever's really pull out. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be whatever's in front. Um, there are a ton of chips, but I don't think he'll bring chips because that's too crunchy. I think for the mic that it'll drive crunchy. me crazy. <laughs> too crunchy. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go either Welch's fruit snack or sour strip. Okay. I, I was feeling a fruity vibe weirdly. Fruity I don't know vibe. what snacks are in there, but I was getting a fruity There's vibe. There's a ton so. of snacks. There's also Welch's a ton of chocolate, sense. but I don't think he'll grab that either. Right after our workout. Yeah, I know. I know. Heavy. Also, this is this is off topic, but I went to the gym today this morning and the gym was supposed to open at eight, but I guess someone like opened the doors a little bit early and it was 740 and I was the only person in the gym. Devin and I go to the same gym and it was the most eerie fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And for the amount of times that I've been like, oh, like I wish it was just me here. In that moment, experiencing the gym is just me. It was so fucking weird. You guys have to understand too, this gym is so open. Like you can see everything, oh, everything. from any point yeah, in the yeah, gym. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's an entirely open concept gym. So like I was getting nervous for Lauren, like what happens when that first guy yeah, walks the up first person and you're goes, just alone working just, out I with know, him? I know, I know, I know. Oh my God, no, it was so weird. It was so weird. I like stuck myself in a corner machine because I was like, <laughs> how do I feel not exposed from every angle by myself? It was very Let odd. me not do any but uh, exercises, exercises right now. Right now, I know when it's just me here. This is very odd. Okay, impromptu break. We'll we'll circle back when Jeremy shows up with his surprise snack. The surprise snack has arrived. What about options? Are you, options? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my god. Oh we my did god, not I'm expect so this. Excited. He brought the closet to you. Oh my god. Also, I'm concerned because that bag had things in it from downstairs, and so I'm like, what else did he bring upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's a cup holder. A coaster, you mean? Yeah, that too. Okay, so. <clears throat> wow, can for, we get a, a snack haul, snack haul? Here we go. Yeah, for myself, I brought many different options for White Claws. Beverages, okay, White Claws, yeah. love it. So, wow. oh, including the Topo Chico uh, strawberry guava seltzer, seltzers. The amount of times that I have almost grabbed that exact Topo Chico and taken it to the gym with me as a Celsius. Sour cream and onion chippos. Ooh, I guess that you wouldn't bring a chipo because it's too crunchy for the audio. Well, you know, at a certain point in time, you just have to let the audience suffer for the same thing I do. Okay. Crispers. Oh, God. Some uh, knockoff Chicago style popcorn. Uh huh. Sweet, sweet peach rings. Ew. <laughs> Nine year old gingerbread Oreos. Yeah, those are expired. Don't touch those. <laughs> Mr. Beast, quinoa, chunk, crock. Chocolate <laughs> bar feastables. Oh, we tried those on the pod. Your sunglasses. Okay. Quest tortilla protein style spicy sweet chili oh, flavors. Oh, those are so good. I'm gonna eat those before my last appointment today. Ooh, and pudding. With no spoon. No spoon. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Oh. And, oh, a coffee crisp. <gasps> Ooh. And a banana. Take your poison. Wow. Fuck me, I'm torn. I'm real torn. Yeah, those Oreos, those need to go for sure. Mm, well. What kind of fla what flavor? Oh, ooh, there's this new flavor pack of White Claws that's got this purple one in it. It's, what is it? The this Wild Berry Acai. No, 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 this one right here is from that pack that's got such good flavors. Yeah, so this one's the um, Wild Berry Acai Smash. I have things to do today still. <laughs> Yeah, okay, but, give me that thing. Give me that there thing. There you go. <laughs> it's Labor Day. It's Labor Day. Oh my God, my poor lash girl's gonna be like, you smell like alcohol? It's 3 p.m. No, it's fine. This is the one that you have come to the house? Mm -mm. Oh, you have to go there? Mm -hmm. oh, oh my God, this tastes like a fruit by the foot. 
No comment. Mm. Okay, so. Wow. Was that the snack you wanted? No, I mean, yeah, I only took the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. Where were we? I don't know if any of these surprise snacks are really tickling the fancy. Oh, by the way, Donna had a follow-up point. She goes, this Ooh. is ending the Corn Palace story I forgot. Imagine my dismay when I learned that not only was I, was I not the Corn Palace princess for all time, but but I was not to say even for a year, unbelievably to me, they chose a new Corn Palace princess that each show held shows all day long, <gasps> every day. Shut the, no! So Donna <gasps> was the Corn Palace princess for- About 25 that. minutes. Yeah, I imagine oh, if you've gone to um, medieval times- Right. And someone says- They chose a new queen. Yes, you, sire! You were the jester. Yes. Uh, the audacity. Talk about from the princess <gasps> to the jester, just like oh that. Oh my God. I oh, I'm so mad for her. I know. She was, wow. listen. I, you know what though? She did get her, her five minutes of fame though. If she got to be in her hometown newspaper. You know what's funny That's though? a flex. Think about whoever owned the corn palace, Mitchell. Yeah. So Mitchell knew that if he were to have, you know, hire probably one or two minimum wage workers to send out mm -hmm. the, the, the information, so where are you from? Quincy, Illinois. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, got it. They then go and call the news stations in each one of those small towns of the places that people visit and tell them that they're, someone from their city has it's been the selected. Corn, the corn princess. And it's nothing but free <gasps> that fucking is media. genius. Gene, yes. Who needs paid Instagram That's, ads? Well, so that, that yeah. person that, would have had is, a yeah. multi-million dollar drop mm -hmm. shipping company in 2022 without question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That is truly genius. Using the old noggin. Wow, Shout big brain, lots of folds. Shout out Mitchell. Big brain, lots Corn of folds. Corn Palace. Um, did we finish, did we, did, we, did we circle back on all of our corn headlines? Hard to say that we didn't hit them. I feel like we've done a lot of corn <laughs> for this episode. <laughs> have, we done, have we checked our, oh, so it's just been corn, 40 minutes? Oh, it's just corn. Oh, okay, oh, good. Cool. good. Uh, corn and penguin talk. Yeah, well, and also a special appearance by Donna. Wow, oh, people are gonna be so excited. I'm excited still. Yeah, because the, the issue is, here's the, here's the problem, is that Donna will never come physically sit in oh, never on the never. episode. You, you think that in, when she comes to visit, that if you asked her to be on the pod. Yeah, she wouldn't say yes. Yeah, she wouldn't say yes. We could trick her though. We could just like have tea in here and have the cameras on. <gasps> just put an area mic up, see what she says. I'm sitting here. She's yeah. like, what is yeah, this guy? Who's this guy? guy? Who's this him. nice man? Yeah, he just, he, <laughs> he's like working. Corner. He's a guest in our house. He's just working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're like bringing up headlines. Yeah, what, what, what? This what? is his WeWork space. <laughs> yeah, money was tight. We let him say it for a little bit. Yeah, so yeah, what? Do you have any comments on what's on the screen there, mom? Yeah, what Actually, do we think about this talk, headline? Talk closer to this. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gail's here ready to like rip and talk some shit. Well, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, I'm glad. I do have thoughts. <laughs> I do have an opinion. I do. What does she call them? She calls them unsolicited. Usually she says, I have unsolicited advice. She loves to give people unsolicited advice. Which is a podcast by itself, but yeah. Yeah, which is a, yeah, a podcast named by uh, Ashley and Darren. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's all my headlines. I have to burp hang when we can't move on to the next I, thing. See? Oh, gosh. You're not allowed to, to, to put I anything did, in your mouth. I did, ever, I did everyone the favor of moving mm -hmm. my, I knew I was going to say that's not in your favor, but okay. Ah. Um. Let's talk about let's talk about Monty Lopez. Let's talk about Monty Lopez. And so our last episode hasn't gone up yet, so I don't know how the people feel about Monty yet, based on some of the commentary. We made I'm last sure we'll episode. pick up whatever side is not favorable. I don't know how you could not be on Team Addison here in this situation. Um, I'm sure there's some pretty staunch support groups on Facebook maybe, for for our maybe. boy. So I mean, the spark notes of this situation, and go back to the last episode for like the full the full tea, is that Addison's parents are going through a. What was that? <laughs> go on. That was the perfect sound to describe this conversation. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. It's like, you're exactly. it's such shock. You have to- Yeah. That was like a five-year-old, just like- a Thirsty <laughs> ass situation. Um, yeah, situation. Addison Ray's parents are feuding online. Addison is kind of, I feel like, sunken into the background of all of this because she's mortified, I'm sure. Unless she's in on it, which we don't think that she is. Um, Monty is being- What is she directing the whole thing? Imagine. Monty's being disgusting. There's no way that she's directing Cute. this Dad whole thing. being weird. Nailed it, it's, mom. It's 10 levels past weird. Like okay. he's being disgusting. Yeah. And her mom is being courted by Young Gravy. And by courted, I mean, they are uh, demonstrating many levels of PDA like last week at the uh, MTV Music Awards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, so I want to give you some Monty updates because he was supposed to launch an OnlyFans. 
yesterday. And so I literally was fucking ready. I was like, I was like, oh my God, the title of this pod is I bought Monty Lopez's OnlyFans. So you didn't have to, but apparently it's not real, but I do want to go over some of his tweets because I don't know if I really believe that it wasn't real. What if it turns out that Mitchell is, is actually Monty? Who the fuck's Mitchell? From the Corn Palace. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I want to read you, I want to read you some Monty Lopez tweets. Um, I'm going to listen. Should I have a zaddy Twitter for pics? Like you're telling me that someone who's tweeting about posting zaddy pics on Twitter isn't going to be making an OnlyFans because there's a whole thing where people think that like he did say he was going to do an OnlyFans. Um, I got to find the Probably tweet to see that. like how much people would be interested. Maybe. And then he tweets, I need to see you. I get alone in my thoughts. Am I a man child or a zaddy? A man child. Man child, yeah, easy, easy answer. Not even a man. I gotta be honest, there's been so few times in history where those two things have almost been confusable. <laughs> like man child or zaddy, hardly ever. Also, if you're interested, he also has his own merch. Um, a few that say fame whore, gilf, grandpa I like to fuck, DTF. Is he actually a grandfather? Yeah. He, Oh wait, is he not a grandfather? No! Oh yeah, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Addison is his oldest kid. Yeah, you're so right. Oh, but don't worry, there's a DILF one, celebrity and bad dad. Well, I want to be very clear. Also not a DILF. Yeah, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, he's got two shirts that say GILF on them. Also loves the bad dad merch. I don't know. I just like, I'm just so mortified. It just like, it just brings me back to when that like one text conversation leaked with him being like, we talking jet money when he was like trying to finesse that girl into like sleeping Ew, with him or something. Yeah. yeah, it's just like the vibes so are just so great. He thinks he has jet money? That he, you made how? What? From, that he made how? From his yeah, daughter. Yeah, from your daughter? From <sighs> your daughter, you got, okay, Jeremy over here is having, <laughs> ooh, that's a great fist sound. Mm -hmm. Wow. The ASMR. Yeah, the, the ASMR sun. is real today. Yeah, everyone was shitting on it until it sounded nice. Um, If I did a reality series, would you watch it? No, we wouldn't fucking watch it except we're watching one right now, so maybe. I know, literally we're watching it go down all in, all in fucking real life. See, would Young Gravy be considered a SoundCloud rapper? Hashtag fake rapper. I don't care what frat you were in. You can't alpha me at Young Gravy. Tough being alone all the time. God's was Monty plan. Lopez in a frat? I don't know. See, he seems like the kind of guy that wouldn't even be able to make that. I've been getting a lot of Young Gravy like content since the VMAs. And I feel like any interview podcast he's gone on, he has been asked about it. Oh my God. But yeah, like, I just can't 100%. imagine intertwining yourself in all this drama. And then like every day you're going to be yeah. asked about it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Okay. This is the teaser that he posted. Um, uh, so it wasn't, sorry, it wasn't the teaser from a Twitter. So that's why people are like, oh, is this real or not? Tweezer. But it just sounds exactly like him. Thanks, Devin. It was unleash that's the good. beast, women love me and men want to be me. Social media can't handle me being raw. Blech. Subscribe for the most explicit, explicit version of me. Lip shits. Um, yeah, okay, well. And, and did we, is, did we anyone get an active count on how many people are subscribed? No, wait, so it didn't, it didn't go live. It got deleted, I'm pretty sure. <sighs> and this is why like there's talk on, on whether it's true or not. And I think he, I think he said that it, it's, oh yeah. So it was white from the site. A quick check of OnlyFans on Sunday morning confirmed Lopez's alleged account is no longer there. So that was quick grand opening and grand closing just like that. It's all, it's all part of the plan. I it's know, getting us I know. to talk about him. I know, and it's working. We've done two episodes now that have Monty T. He's just so gross. It's so gross. I feel so bad for Addison. It's so gross. Like you're See, what I would love nothing more is <sighs> someone with an oodles amount of money yeah. to put in a fight or promote a fight between him and Andrew Tate, uh -huh. and then, Ooh. but not tell them uh -huh. that they're actually going to buy every seat in the building. And so when they get there, it's, it's just-, just no production. Oh my no god, anything. that would be hysterical. Just a light that doesn't quite find its hinge and just like sits there yeah, and squeaks like, and goes, Yeah, we sold them. Well, the tickets, this is all who showed up. Go ahead, guys. And then don't broadcast the results because no one gives a fuck. And just that's it. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Yeah. That's 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 what their egos they need to be humble. See, that's fifty cent level, like just like treachery. Yeah. When he went and started buying all of his enemies like first four rows. Oh my God, well, remember when all the K-pop fan cams took over all of like the Trump shit? 
That shit was Kinda. hilarious. Oh my God, he would have all these rallies and it was free tickets. So all of the K-pop like fan cam people would go and buy all of the tickets. So they were technically sold out. And so then no one showed up because they had all the tickets. I do remember that. Yeah. Fucking savage. Genius. Yeah. Savage. Yeah. Love it Everyone's so zigging. much. You zag. You zag. You yeah. zag. For the rest of this podcast, we're going to talk about ways to get back your enemy in the most creative ways possible. <laughs> Start, Lauren. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Um, I... <laughs> so we went we went to the cutest little spot in Malibu for the last four days for a late B day celebration. And um this, this is this is where we were before and after most shit all over Bear yes. Dreams. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Physically. Physically shit. Literally. Chat. Yeah. And um this place has like a few restaurants, has like a small, they're all like like little bungalows and suites. Like it's not like a hotel type of vibe. Um, but they also have lots of different event spaces. So they have like corporate retreats and weddings and parties and stuff like that. And um, so in the suite next to us, there was a uh, bride and all of her bridesmaids. I don't know if they were all staying in the suite, if they're all just getting ready there or whatever. But as I was um, walking Moose one morning, there was, it definitely wasn't the bride. I think it might've been the maid of honor. She was like out sitting, um, like kind of like in an open area, just like in the grass in front of the suites. And her, and so, so first I went out and she was out there just like looking really stressed with like a white robe, her hair was all done up her makeup was or no her makeup wasn't done because she had like those fun little like eye patches looking super stressed and at first I was like oh my god I wonder if this is the bride and she's like having like a crisis of like do I want to get married take moves back inside went outside to go throw something out she's then surrounded by all of her bridesmaids or like fellow bridesmaids whatever the situation was and they're throwing out all of these adjectives to describe the groom the source machine <laughs> source machine. They were like, so I think, I think my best guess is that it was the maid of honor and she was writing her speech. Last fucking second. And last fucking second, she looked so stressed. And they're like, what about like, he's a family man. He's confident. He's loving. He's funny. He's going to support you through anything. And they were literally just listing off like a fucking thesaurus. Just wordassociation.com. Just literally just like the most also just like generic adjectives to describe something kind of positive, but <laughs> so like impersonal. Like, like, um, he's like, okay, Sarah, oh, yeah. no, not helpful. Oh my God, it was <laughs> so funny. I was walking by and I desperately wanted to like ask what the situation was. I wanted to be so nosy. See but... guys, just put one more white claw down, get up there with that microphone, see how it goes. Yeah. Did you ever give, um, you, yeah, you <laughs> did give, I? yeah, lots of speeches, uh, right? Cause you were best man at Jordan's wedding. I was best man at, at Jordan's wedding. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been given the microphone when I wasn't the best man at weddings. Dear God. And I said, please, no, no, no. Yeah, give it to me. Just <laughs> one of the, well, how, is, what's, how long is my set? They go, <laughs> just talk for 30 seconds. Go, 30 minutes, got it. I'm on it. Yeah. One of the funniest things that you've ever said, like one of the funniest things that- This is gonna be an insult somehow. No, 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 no. One of the funniest things that you said that for whatever reason, my dad <laughs> thinks about all the time and thinks is so funny is the time where you just like out of pocket said that you love to hear your own voice. And <laughs> like you made that That's, joke. I, it was funnier than that once again, but yeah. What? I think it was funnier the way I said it, but Fine. What did you, that's what you said you love to hear? You love the sound of your own voice? No. What did no. you say? What was the joke then? The the context came up about like- Speaking. Speaking. Yeah, public speaking. And I said, I one of my favorite pastimes is a room filled with people listening to my own voice. Right, <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> yeah. That's even fucking worse. <laughs> Thank you. That's even fucking worse. <laughs> and my dad like laughs about that all the time. He thinks it's so funny. Yeah. It, main character energy. Main character energy. Thanks, like, like I said, like I, look, I don't, when I say it was better, I mean, it's 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 worse for me to hear it back now. Yeah, what I was gonna say. But, <laughs> but better for what we're going through here. Yeah, no, no, no. It does enhance the story, just not particularly in your favor. Oh, depends whose favor we're talking about. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd rather hear my voice than someone who has nothing to say on the microphone. That's true. Yeah. yeah. No, there's nothing worse than like watching someone who wants public to also speak, not be speaking. Who wants to not be speaking, and you can just feel how stressed <sighs> and poorly it's going for them. Like, I would have loved to hear what that maid of honor speech ended up being after listening to all of the generic um, adjectives that her friends were throwing and out. And Tim. To, As a family man that we know uh, will provide and support Liza for the rest she of wants their it. marriage. Oh my God, it was so ridiculous. Yep, yeah, no, no, it was um, wasn't great. Uh, yeah, but we had a good time. Moose did not have a run-in with the bull or the 
horses or the zebra this time. There's no zebra on the property. Once but yeah, again, they also- I just said he didn't have a run in with it. So that's still accurate. You said the zebras, if there was a zebra that well, lived there. We just yeah, didn't we see actually, the, we didn't go visit the cows. We didn't see the zebra. We didn't go visit the cows and the bulls. It's because we were in the bougie section this time. We were we were actually even closer to the cows know, and the bulls this but time. But like we wa we were already past all that. It's like the the road to get there. Moose was a big fan of the cows last year. Didn't love the bull. I think it was like a little alpha on actually, alpha energy. Once again, actually, that's not true. Moose was fine with the bull. The bull didn't love our bully. The bull did not love our bull. Yeah. Yeah. No, he our really bull. did. Our bull. <laughs> bull terrier. He didn't. He didn't love our bull terrier. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was just he could he could just sense the masculine energy dripping. Yeah. Off alpha versus alpha. Yeah. I get it. We have what we'd be confirmed to bait like a beta's beta. <laughs> He's just a sweet boy. Yeah. He's just a baby. Like I'm struggling to think of what the letter is after beta in the Greek alphabet, which is tough because I did have to know that at some point. Where's theta? Not in the beginning. What about omega? Still not in the beginning. What about delta gamma? St well, anchors go down. Uh, what about um, <sighs> tried out? All the all the DGs who were not going to be happy about that one. <laughs> they know. Um, <laughs> Remy's a DG. What does she always say before she puts her anchor up? Is this the anchor? That no. no wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh God, my arms are sore. Right? This is tough to watch. Um, I'm, cr I'm cringing. This yeah. is the DG thing. Yeah. Right? Now go down. Ah! No, <laughs> anyway. Is my supposed to squat or is it supposed to be my arm that goes down? Oh man, I would have been- tell her? I would have been, been such a good sorority girl. Mm -hmm. It would have been great. I would have been such a good- I yeah. would have thrived in the DIY spirit, except for Bama Rush, I think is now over, but Bama Rush was like a hot part of TikTok. Bama Rush talk was- It's a week. Thriving. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. It's wild. I would have not thrived as a sorority girl if you had to dance. Oh, well, okay. But think about all of, like the the just- Cast members yeah. in the back, yeah. just rocking and bobbing with like a neon something on. Yeah. You could have been that. I could have been that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. White claw in hand. White claw in yes! hand. Yes. You could have just done that. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd be okay at that. You'd be great at that. I'd be pretty good at that. Yeah. You are I'm great a, at fake laughing. I'm so good at fake laughing. And I'm also really good. I just feel like in this, in this industry, you have to be really good at fake laughing. Like yeah. as douchey as that sounds. At award shows, you have to be. So good. See, people don't realize award show face. You're just here always. Yeah, yeah. Because the last thing you want is someone to be like, and now for the lifetime achievement award. And you're just doing this. <laughs> oh, or this they people. just like happen to cut to the audience at like a random time to show the crowd and someone just and looks like just, a massive bitch. Just, 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 just cleaning out your nose at the same time, just picking something out of your teeth. And they're just like, Ugh, yikes, who let Illinois in? I got my Emmy's dress and I'm very excited. That was your Emmy's dress? My Emmy's dress. Yeah, my Emmy's dress? My Emmy's dress. My Emmy's dress. We are dress. going to the Emmy's next Monday and I'm we be. so excited. It's so cool. I know, I'm so we excited. Be. We are gonna have a pod after that episode. Oh my God, because I will be wildly starstruck. I will approach no one because I'm scared of everyone, but my dress is Hot fire. There's a good chance that I approach someone on her behalf just to make her feel embarrassed. Uh -huh, potentially, yes. My mom, I sent a photo to my mom. The more I get invited to these things, the more of a nuisance I become. I sent I sent Gail a photo. She said, OMG, I love it. It's perfect. Revealing, but not really. Very flattering. <laughs> That's like the best part, revealing, but not really. Because I basically- It's my brand. It's revealing, but not really. Yeah. Yeah, it really is, honestly. Yeah. That actually really sums it up. Revealing, but not really. I know. Like ho, but not really, mm. but a little bit. Ho adjacent. Ho adjacent. Yeah. We're going to look so cute. The dress is black. I'm going to leave a surprise to like go find via vlog, Instagram, whatever, um, when I get to wear the dress. But I'm so excited because I feel like normally events, is like you can wear a long or a short dress, but like this is a moment where you get to like go all out. You know, it, we're going to be in a lot of like sitting is the dress is the dress is a comfy for sitting. Is or isn't? Is it? is is is. There was a few that I tried on it's today. Like your vagina is almost out. Oh yeah, for sure it is. Okay. Yeah. And do you think that's comfortable for sitting? Yeah. I mean, during the breaks, you can walk let her, around. Let her breathe. Let her breathe. <laughs> let her <him> hang. <laughs> No, I mean, 
Listen, the the ones, there were two dresses that I tried on that you that I wouldn't have been able to wear any underwear in because they had a ton of cutouts on the side. So like having a bodysuit underneath of it is the biggest upgrade that I could possibly ask for. It's best case scenario. Cause a lot of them was no underwear. A lot of them were just like no oxygen in general because they're so tight around the waist, which is fine when you're standing. But when you sit down, like your breathing is definitely restricted because some of the zippers are just so tight or it's a corset situation. But we're in a suite, so. Um, just said that so bougie. Did you hear that? I mean, I'm just realizing it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, or not not that it doesn't matter, but like an abortion was the last place that you would want your coochie out because there's cameras everywhere. Or yeah, or Jumanji maybe, Lopez, maybe, yeah, you'd love is, your coochie, you out, want your coochie right? out. Your five minutes. No, of no, no. Fame I get to wear fleeting. nude underwear, and then the coochie's not actually out. Okay. I feel like on TikTok sometimes I see people talking about having like. Yeah. What was it? What was the term we learned last week? Was it elephant knuckle? No. <laughs> you, you, you keep making this shit up. No, remember they said it was when a camel toe is like bigger, the next level of a camel toe is an elephant knuckle. Yeah. Wasn't that it? Yeah, an elephant yeah. knuckle. We learned that term last week. You are welcome. This is an educational podcast. And so I think that if I had an elephant knuckle situation down there, I wouldn't be able to wear the bodysuit for the night, but I am lucky enough that I am not elephant knuckling. So it's going to be Whoa, great. It, that'll <laughs> end up on Reddit at some point. Um, do we have any more other really chart topping topics to talk about. <laughs> oh my God. Are you allowed to talk about who might be in the suite with us? Definitely not. Mm. Oh, is, the secrecy is killing me. Okay, yeah. give a wink. Is Sydney Sweeney in your suite? I would never allow that to happen. If Sydney was, <laughs> I would Lauren never wouldn't be. allow that to happen. And by would Lauren, it'd be Jeremy that would not be. Sydney and I would be there. Jeremy would be in the, the fucking nosebleed seats. <laughs> Because there's no I world. I guess the party's in the nosebleeds. But there's no world where you and Sydney Sweeney are allowed to be in the same suite together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just me, Anna Armas, and Sweens. Sween. Oh, that's a. That's not a. That's not a. We watched um a boxing what? fight yesterday. Skid. When. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No. I, not great either. Yeah. Well, the guy's last name was Ariola, and that also was not the most it's fortunate tough. last yeah. name. He was a fighter. Now, he was a now fighter. Now we know why. I know Ariola. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. That would have been just a really tough last name to have when you're like in school with middle schoolers. Like he mentioned like his like his like nickname is like Chris Big Man Areolas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Like, "Ew." laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he's a fighter now, because he got he got scrappy about being bullied for his Areola last name. Maybe. Kids are immature. Yeah. But but penguins. Drip maturity. Yeah, I know that's what I'm saying. Lauren. If you could make five thousand dollars more a year hanging out with penguins and cuddling and petting them. And only needed a master's them? degree to do it. Yeah. A lot of you need a master's degree to teach. Public schools, you would need to move forward in your education to get a master's degree within the first five years. Um, wait, what? Say that again? Most states. Most states. Require uh -huh. once you have received a position uh -huh. to move forward with your master's degree. Wow, really? Within the first five years of <gasps> your employment. To make fucking 40K a year? Make 80 to 90K a year. Wait, someone told me that I have a teacher friend who only makes 40. Where? She is in Texas. I actually think that's very low. Yeah, that feels really low, right? I think she's lying. That's she live in bumfuck nowhere in Texas? I don't well, know, Texas. I'm not sure, I guess so maybe. And I do love Texas, so no disrespect. Oh, by the way, we're going to Raising Cane's after this. I can't wait. And by we, you mean you. Because <laughs> again, I have things name. to do today. <laughs> yeah, so do I. Like go to Raisin Fucking Canes. Um, average, well, actually, why am I doing this? Devin, average <laughs> teacher's salary, Texas. Public. School. I just can't believe how low it is because teachers, they like, they work so hard in Texas. And then look up um, average teacher salary. I just want to know like masters. across the states. So... So 40 would be the absolute lowest, but yeah. So look at, look Damn, at salary.com, so 54. 40 to 89, 27 to 63. And then how, what's the average high school? Teachers just deserve to be paid so much more. It's insane. Okay, so median 61. Okay. Yeah, so 70 and 90, right? Or 75% to 90%. So it's like farther along in your career, up to 90K. And then look up master's degree, 58. 
58 to, after getting your master's degree, that's the median? Yeah, it's not good. Oh my God. See, like, wh- how would that incentivize? Like, there's always, they're always talking about how there's a teacher shortage. Like, why the fuck would that incentivize anyone to go be a teacher when they make such, so little for how much work they put in? So much work. It's so crazy. I feel so, like I genuinely have so much empathy towards teachers. It's crazy. Um, I saw, so Burning Man just happened this weekend and, or this week, it's all, the, it, it's today like a, it ends. It ends today. Yeah. The amount of people that I have, like I've been on vacation for five days and oh, the amount of people that have been on vacation God. for yeah. four days before me, just fucking off doing drugs in the okay. desert. I need to read the tweet of someone that was on my Twitter timeline today um, or the other day of Burning Man. And that's what inspired this conversation. Wow, Jeremy has already crushed a white claw. Jesus Christ. Oh, what flavors do we have? What are the options? Citrus yuzu smash or watermelon? Mm. We're yuzuing. Oh yeah, yuzu for sure. No, no question. What? No, no, go for it. Okay, so this is the tweet I saw. Got massaged by, this is this is a dude. Got massaged by two naked guys, gave one to a stranger girl and left without taking her contact. Had DMT yesterday, which is basically like the dream drug and experienced ego death again, attended a Tantra, Tantra, Tantra speed dating, mm-hmm. took a class at Orgy Dome, had a breakthrough via consult with a goddess. So much more, five days to go. And I was like, this is just so much to take in because, oh, is it the yuzu not good or is it just too spicy? It's hit you in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. it the fizzies? No, just the yuzu. The yuzu. Yeah. You don't like it? Can I try it? Yeah. Okay. So reluctant. I know, so reluctant <laughs> to share, jeez. I don't like sharing things with Lauren. It's not great. I like it. Don't like it? No, I do. It tastes like lemonade. Yeah, no, it's like- Tastes like spicy lemonade. The, the difference is like, the strawberry guava mm-hmm. is very sweet oh, and yeah. not soury that's a little, and puckery. That's a little like this is tartar. Puckery. Yeah. 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 Um, the puckery that's going on around here. The puckery. The puck- <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's terrible. It's fucking awful. Don't so laugh at that. That's the tweet that I saw on Burning Man that I was like, oh my God, this is just so much to take in. I was also somewhere the other day where a girl was just talking mad shit on Burning Man saying that it's like, the rich person's uh, yeah. like fake spirituality hangout or like festival, or whatever. They weren't being nice. Well, y'all know Elon Musk goes. Oh my God, yeah. Does he still go? I don't know, but I used to have a boss that would make his tent. <gasps> so she worked in commercials and music videos, but then during Burning Man time, like a month before Burning Man, she'd make this elaborate tent for Elon and all his friends. And then because it was so good, every year Elon would always invite her <gasps> to stay with them. Oh my God, because she would be like the tent I would love master. to see the drug intake on that tent. That Ooh, is right? so yeah. wild. Yeah. I think Leo goes, Leonardo DiCaprio. It's, well, that makes sense. It's crazy. So for those of you who aren't familiar with people. Burning Man is, what? Did Have he, you seen all of the memes right now floating about about Leo, about how he broke up with his girlfriend because she turned 26 and the whole, the whole so joke bad. is that- He's with someone as old as 25? Well, that's the thing is that they can only be 25 and as soon as they hit like 26, he dumps Heavens. them. Leo, is everything okay? It's a little high, Leo. Yeah. I know, it's a little high. She's start, like forming opinions. Her I frontal know, lobe is it's crazy. matured at that point. That, yeah, that's the, well, then the like, frontal lobe yeah. fully forms. He's gonna be able to not just get away with fucking anything. I By know. the way, big Leo fan. I, 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 I think he's great, but I wouldn't necessarily Minus his dating condone choices. his, but you know what? Better 25 than 15. Okay, wait, I have to tell you this. I just saw a video of a girl admitting to having hooked up with Drake and Leo. (gasps) And she says in the video about how having sex with Leo involved him wanting to fuck outside with headphones on. I have heard this multiple times. Allegedly. He headphones, headphones. And also he apparently, again, allegedly, Allegedly. likes it doggy style. So he's not even looking at the person. Yep. Allegedly. Oh, that's what she said too. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. So it was a girl giving her like, like first hand witness encounter. <gasps> she was honest too. That well, is so wild. She didn't see what happened. Right? Yeah, cause she wasn't looking. <laughs> Literally wasn't looking. I've heard that. Yeah. Outside doggy with headphones. Crazy. That is so, imagine how insulting that would be. And he's like, she, I think she said he was listening to like meditative shit too. Wasn't like cool Enya. music. Who comes <laughs> <laughs> Wait, have you ever seen that TikTok? Again, I feel like this might be just like on my corner but, but then, of like, the free like page. With like a classic like ABG breakdown. Yeah. 
Well. So there's this TikTok of this, it was like this Reddit thing that went viral. And it was this guy saying that he has this sex playlist and there's one specific song that he always like finishes to. Yeah. And him and his girlfriend have been dating for two years. And she eventually came out and was like, I hate that song and I hate this playlist. And he was really upset and- Find time for a new girlfriend. Okay, so anyway, outside of their- <laughs> And so Diplo got upset. And <laughs> outside of their relationship problems, at the end of the Reddit thing, they play the song and it is the uh, fucking, I, I'm nervous that we're gonna get um, copyrighted for it, but it is so funny. And it's like the weirdest kind of like electronic song that's got like the weirdest beat to it. And so he's basically saying that he finishes to the song like, because it's got a really give us, good Give us your best love impersonation making. of what that beat is. I forget because now all I can hear is the Enya song. So now I'm all thrown off. And so, but it's got this like really weird beat. It's like, burr, 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 burr. that sounds like the- <laughs> a, a heart machine. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can find it. I don't even know what to search to find this song. I don't do um, uh, um, it. Oh, Brad, a guy who played music. Oh my God, this is literally it. Thank okay. you for listening to us, right? So this is the song. I, fuck, I'm, I'm nervous if we're gonna get copywritten or not. I just wanna hear it. Okay. Today I messed up. My girlfriend of two years told me the music that I play while making love is weird and a major turn off. A little backstory. When I first started making love, I researched into ways to be better as I was a little stiff and pretty much had no idea what I was doing. I read online that you can play music and match the rhythm in order to put on a better performance. King. I searched love making songs and started slowly creating a playlist in which I was comfortable matching the rhythm. He gets there her. are a few songs to my playlist, but it's one song in particular, Go which off. actually happens to be my favorite, Literally. that my girlfriend hates and say <laughs> turns her off in a major way. <laughs> I don't understand why it has taken her two years to tell me she hates that song. It's a good love making song with good rhythm. I feel the way I messed up is I could have possibly asked her previously if she likes the playlist or any song she'd like to add or change. Yeah, but to leave it for up. two years thinking our love making life is great, but in her eyes has been ruined by my music has left the whole situation feeling awkward and I'm a bit annoyed. But like, I pretty much played this tune every- Couldn't he have asked her, hey, you want to add some songs to the playlist? Well, she could, listen, empty mouths don't get fed. Open your mouth. Speak. Right. Speak your mind. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, I think the communication Lauren has is, never is, fucking had a thought that didn't also come out of her mouth towards me. Ever. Yeah, 100%. So anyway, <laughs> so then it plays the song at the end. And so like you're invested in like this whole situation and then they they, they just check the they chat. gift you the song at the end. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's hear it. Love with no music, but I was still thrusting to the tune playing in my head. She <laughs> recognized this and asked me to stop. I thought this song- Wait, that's the part that we miss is that he, even though he stopped playing the music, he's just like had sex with that song so many times that she recognized the rhythm that he used to hit it to. He's like, boom. Ready? Oh my God. Boom, perfect. Boom. And I always thrust along with the tune and feel it gives me the perfect rhythm for doing the deed too. I usually bust to this song and find it <laughs> devastating. She what? the song. Here is that song. <laughs> This is not orgasmic Listen, maybe, music. Maybe she's not that all. She's not all <laughs> that wrong. People like people have just been going wild on the internet it's trying like, to like <laughs> mimic <laughs> exactly. See, I was not far off. <laughs> <laughs> it's um wouldn't be on my top thousand. No, would be on my bottom thousand. Mm -hmm. And so people are trying to just like mimic also, what they think, like the rhythm that he would <laughs> do, 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 do. Like it's the just. Thrusting. I know. Yeah, people are going wild and it is hysterical. But, I mean, 700 days is a long time to not say anything about anything. It's a very long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't go seven maybe seconds. They don't, maybe they don't have sex that often. So it's only actually like once a month, which what, is not that many times. 24 times, about 23 too many. Yeah. I think even one time, like if that song played and like, I'd Lord be like, and I, let's not do that well, again. Well, Lord and I love to just look. I mean, my favorite thing is Spotify. Well, my favorite and unfavorite thing. I can't wait to hear what you're about to say here. <laughs> I feel like we're about to overshare. This is not the time that you <laughs> skip. Anyway, so step into our life. So we love to to throw a little bit of a playlist on, but neither of us are gonna go put a fucking playlist together because oh, yeah, no, it's no. past CD burden days in our life. Yeah. We know what we're good at. That's not one of them. The problem Speak is- Speak for yourself. I mean, when's the last time you fucking- tapes. When's the last time you burned a CD? 
Also, do you have a CD burner in this home? No, 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 no. I just said I, I put, I right, I'm burned bomb it's pa- CDs. Sure, back in the day. Yeah, back in the day. Did you do an MP3? So you go to the data side, so you could do like 50 different tracks. No, MP3 side. Ooh, so I you could like it. stuck at like 20, 24 tracks mm-hmm. max. Yeah. So you throw that thing on data. Sure, the sound quality goes No, no, to no, shit. but then you have a good playlist and you got to change it every month anyway with any song. So it's like 50 is too many. It's inconvenient. But I would reburn that bitch. Yeah, but it's CDR better to have less CDRM. songs are. Oh, and you just kept them? What? Not eco-friendly. Okay, go, go, go. Anyway, as I was saying, so I'll just type in just sex, love yeah. on Spotify. There's actually a good place called Bedroom Jams. That's pretty good. But, but sometimes I like to see what somebody else has made their bedroom jam, like 637 yeah. views. I go, fuck it. That's oh like my God. 630 yeah. Yeah, yeah. times someone's Oh my God, my thing. favorite gym playlist has like 600 likes on it. Like yeah. it's like, it's a, it's low key. <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is I prefer micro influencers burned yeah. uh-huh. sex playlist to make sweets we love to. No, I fully agree. Yeah. My Let me see, my gym playlist that I like right now is called Gym EDM Trap Lift Heavy Mix. Throw a musical theater in there and I might as well have made it. Right, and so, oh, I actually lied. There's 1,500 people that wow. have I'm actually gonna make this a, playlist. I'm gonna make a playlist called Thug Theater. Thug Theater, that's pretty exciting. I that like would that. get me lit for sure. You know if I put that shit in West Hollywood, at fucking Abbey, it would, oh, yeah, go that would pop up off for sure on a Tuesday. Okay, I want to talk about the We'd orgy fucking, We would go from slop on my knob, yeah, <laughs> and going on the cop. Oh, <laughs> be great into Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, uh, two remix. <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber would still get his fucking royalties. Sorry, go ahead, Lauren. I want to talk about the orgy dome yeah. at Burning Man because okay, like Burning Man is Two about things I haven't gotten in a long time. The the like the art they like literally let the, lit this giant like wood structure on fire and it at burns Burning away Man. All of the in- yeah, you like you can tack on things, memories, loved ones, whatever to like cleanse yourself when you light like the dude on fire at like the end. And that's like the the signal of- Radical self-alliance. Sure. Sure. And like, there's like lots of other stuff. About Communal running, effort. Personally, it's not for me. Immediacy, participation, it's not for me. leaving You're no trace, literally... civic responsibility, communal effort, radical self-expression, radical self-reliance. I know. It's, a, it's just a lot. They're so big about the whole leave no trace thing of like- de Decommodification. Yeah, but it ends, no up getting, there ends up getting fucking trashed. They're all drugged getting out. Absolutely trashed. It's literally just like a druggy fest in the Is desert where people don't shower. Decommodification. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. one of their principles. Gifting, radical inclusion. Well, I think there's no money exchange, right? No, there's no tickets. Yeah, there's no it's money. Giving and receiving. Yeah. <laughs> no money, you can't buy anything. That is so crazy. It's a barter system? Yes. No, yeah. no, you can't barter either. No bartering. Well, you, so them. like, so if someone's giving out massages and you want one, it, you could be like, let me give you a free hug. That's the one I've been, I've been seeing the, the free hug as the excuse to get things a lot. Huh, trade free or a hug. guy, a guy was uh, giving away miso soup in the back of his truck. No. People were giving him free hugs. Yeah. Miso sleepy doesn't remember anything. <laughs> There's drugs in the miso soup. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, here we go. So the Orgy Dome is about 5,000 square feet. It is a hundred person camp. Um, they have a camp kitchen, shower, shade structure, air conditioned, dust free Orgy Dome. It's easy to find on the play, play, playa. playa. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has power. I didn't realize playa. that they actually had AC and stuff there. I thought that it was just like a hot sweaty dome where people went to go fuck. But apparently it's very consensual and it's, uh, you've got an area, an open floor plan. Uh, question, do you sign a waiver before you walk in? Yes, I think so. I think it's like, I think you literally sign a So what a legal waiver. entity is taking on or refusing to take on liability? Don't know, babe. Don't know. Okay. Open yeah, floor plan contains a just us area for couples and more sums entering the orgy dome who wish to spend time undisturbed together and an open to more area for those couples and more sums who would not mind being approached by others who can sensually ask if they can join them. Sex positive space to the citizens of Black Rock City. More than just a waiting area, it's a place where our consent talk and dome orientation is given. Couples can get in the mood, take their time before entering dome space, meet like-minded couples who are open to more. It's all very crazy. One of the things I saw was they held naked um, massaging classes where you would just go uh, naked 
Uh and just learn how to massage a person. See, like this all feels very LA and like open, but then you put it in the desert where people are not showering and it's 120 degrees. Dust storms are happening. The dust storm. And it just like, it. I feel like you can imagine the different overpowering sense and experience that would be presence. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's not for me. It's not for me. Yeah. It's not for me. There's just nothing I can't seem to find um, an answer for mm. that's not in air conditioning here. Yeah, no, I fully agree. It's it, I did see like the aerial photo though, and it is really crazy how they it all gets set up. Have you seen this? It's insane. like a clock. So it's in a big circle and from 10 till two, like it, if you were to like take the arms of a clock, the area between 10 and two, like this whole like, semi portion of like the big circle is it's like- It's gotta be 120 degrees, right? Oh, hundred percent. Well, so it's You're in the desert. really, really cold at night. Yeah. And insanely hot in the middle of the day. Oh, good. So nothing's convenient. Nothing's convenient. No, mm. you're always uncomfortable. We'll never go to Birdie Man. Oh, absolutely not. Are you kidding Our me? Our HVAC guy, love him. Dan, shout out. <clears throat> Wait, but also this crazy thing, they hold a 50K marathon where you run around the whole entire We uh, know landscape. someone who did it. 31 <laughs> miles? Yes. Isn't that crazy? That sounds like a lot. That's insane. Once again, no air conditioning, no showers. Yeah, no, No. we literally know someone who did it. It It's so crazy. This whole thing. And like, maybe it's something that like, when you go and you experience it, it like all makes sense and things are very clear. But to like an outsider, it's like, just like a mass of what the fuck is going on. If I was the city, desert, village area of Burning Man, I would for sure just send some running water out to the middle of this thing. Mm-hmm. Just people had the option mm-hmm. and they'd probably find a new like location. They're like, let's just send them electricity and plumbing, charge for it, of course, see how it goes. And people are like, it's lost its luster, right? Right. It's like, it's a no Wi-Fi, no service, 80,000 people. Um, you know, Elon has a Starlink over there. You fucking know it. I actually did see some people tweeting about Starlink. Really? And getting service. Yeah, yeah, wow, I really I'm did. I really nerd. did. Ugh. Um, Wait, also the whole virgin burner, if it's your first time as yeah. they're entering the festival, A, I did just learn this yesterday. You get greeted by a naked person, which you have to hug. But then the crazier part is that you then have to get down on the ground and do a dust angel. I read that too. And like that's, you you have to do a dust angel as a virgin before you get in. And so like th- dust angel, just like imagine like a snow angel, but like literally in the desert dust. No, Hel- yeah, I'm- helping you accept that you're about to be dirty all weekend. Right. Mm. And maybe some Thank people you. like that. Maybe they think See, it's a humbling experience. Just, just you lost me at the dust not, virgin. Not for me. Not for me. <laughs> if it wasn't about the dust virgin, I'd go. But I'm not big on the dust virginity. Yeah. And their whole thing is like stands on the leave no trace principle. Um, and there's hella trash that gets left behind, which is really shitty. Um, 80,000 people this year. And also, so one of the guys that we know that did go, he got one of his vehicles approved to go where they make all these like- Entered into a contest. (gasps) Yeah, you have to apply and be approved for these like mutant vehicles that you see rolling around. California to a T here. But they can't go more than five miles per hour. But like, that's like a huge part of Burning Man is like all these like weird little vehicles that just like roam the land. This was the DMV line at Burning Man, basically. Shut the fuck up. It really is quite impressive though, like the random mutant vehicles that people make. Like they're almost like parade floats. Look at the camera. Oh my God. The one that our friend That's a made train. was That's like- a fucking train. That's a soup can. Oh my God, the soup can. Oh my God, you're right. That's a Campbell's soup can. Is that a <gasps> Tiffany box in the back too? Oh. The tiger. My God. Oh my God, the tiger is incredible. Is that a swan? That's a swan. They get a crazy and Oh my God, this is hilarious. This is like half Mad Max. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, literally. yeah, 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 so true. On and, drugs. Um, yeah. The one that our friend made was basically like this giant tricycle. Oh, this looks like my nightmare right here. Just dust storms. It's dust storms and drugs is basically like the, like the encapsulation of Yeah, great of this. cover band name. But like a lot of the videos I've Dust been seeing of the drugs. music. Dust storms and drugs. Hmm. It's like really weird electronic. It's not like cool electronic that you would see at Coachella. And I think it's drug electronic. Too. Yeah. I think it's drug like electronic. Ambient. Yeah. Goat ambient. sounds. Uh-huh. <laughs> goat sounds? Love a good goat sound. Wow. 
Oh my God, these are crazy. Um, I may participate in some of the snack haul well, now that we're wrapping up the pod and I can eat this not on the microphone. Thank you so much for the buffet that you brought up. I know most of it. No, actually that's not true. You did pull, cause I unpacked this already from our Malibu trip and a lot of the, we got a lot of repeats, repeat guests here from the trip. But Anything for you, Wowen. I appreciate the- um, Sentiment. The buffet, Harami. Yeah, listen, I, I'm thinking about you mm-hmm. and I'm thinking about how much more I like you when you're not hangry. Yeah, no, I'm not hangry at all. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you are hangry? Not a great person. It's not as fun. Not a great person when I'm hangry. Not as fun. <laughs> Looks no, away. No, not a great person, but I'm aware. I'm aware of when I'm hangry. Yeah, it's it's tough. Um, if you're in Latvia, it's good to talk to you. Mm-hmm. If you're not in Latvia, it's also good to talk to you. Mm-hmm. We're going on tour sometime between now and never. And make sure and buy that merch. We don't have merch up right now. So we're not going on tour, nor are we- No, nor are we, no. Uh, just, just- We have just nothing to buy. Empty promises, no. Ooh. Okay, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>